Good evening, everyone. It is Tuesday, the 26th of March, and we have almost nearly survived today. So if you're keeping track, 2024, we're winning. <laughs> uh, we have a bunch of updates to stories that we've been following, um, you know, in past Newsy News segments. So we have a bunch of those tonight, and I'm sure we'll find out wherever P. Diddy is, or I'm sorry, Sean Diddy Combs is, I'm sure. Uh, welcome, JKD Buck and Squid Pro Quo and Wolfram and Farrell. Good evening. So our first story is how hero cops stop Baltimore drivers seconds before shit crash. Uh, the bridge is down. So if you are like me and you saw this, I don't know, at zero dark 30 in the morning, um, it looked like there were a lot of vehicles going across the bridge. But it turns out that, yes, well, Thor is being a butt. <laughs> the all white cat is Thor and then the orange one is Loki. And the other ones just hide most of the time. But hero cops managed to block all traffic from Baltimore's Francis Scott Key Bridge with just seconds to spare before a massive container uh, ship slammed into it, then watched in horror as it crumbled into the frigid waters. Hold all traffic onto Key Bridge, one emergency dispatcher told officers around 1.30 a.m. Tuesday, according to police radio traffic. And welcome Lori and Free Spirit Prepping and News and MLS. Nice to see you. There's a ship approaching that just lost their steering. Two cops who happened to be nearby responded and stationed themselves at either end of the 1.6 mile span, stopping cars from crossing the uh, crossing the bridge while a 100 or 130,000 ton Dolly cargo vessel barreled out of control toward the bridge after apparently losing power. Uh, welcome and good evening, Justin Smith and HT. I haven't seen you in a while. I hope you are doing well. Uh, the cops noted that a pothole repair crew was still on the bridge, apparently on a meal break. Before they could warn them, the dally collided with a support, a support beam in the middle of the river, causing the entire bridge to collapse within seconds, throwing eight workers into the water. The whole bridge just fell down. Start, start, whoever, everybody, the whole bridge just collapsed. One frantic cop radioed in. The bridge is down, another officer shouted. It took about 90 seconds for the bridge to collapse following the initial mayday call from the Dolly crew, giving officers only moments to stop the traffic. So, I mean, sadly for those construction workers, it was not quickly enough, but thank goodness they were able to stop most of the traffic that was going on to or coming off of the bridge, or not off of the bridge, but people that were going on to the bridge because it could have been so much worse and that in no way takes off anything from the construction workers that, you know, were on the bridge. Uh, Maryland Governor Wes Moore praised the cops for their quick work in making sure no vehicles were traveling on the bridge when it fell. Welcome, Sophia. They undoubtedly saved numerous lives last night, Moore said in a press briefing Tuesday. A review by Maryland transportation officials also confirmed that there were no vehicles driving on the bridge at the time of the incident. Two of the workers on the bridge were rescued, with one hospitalized and the other one refusing treatment. You are in my thoughts and prayers. Uh, Godspeed, brave warrior. <laughs> <laughs> uh, one of the first responders at the scene told the Post the uninjured man who has yet to be publicly named was shaken up and just wanted to go home. He brushed his clothes off and wanted to see his family, the first responder said. 
He was shaken up a little bit, but nothing major. I guess the good Lord was on his side. Moore said Tuesday afternoon that search and rescue operations uh, were still underway for the six workers who were missing. Um, yeah, I guess they were able to just, since it was so late at night and they were close, they were able to get there and stop anyone from getting onto the bridge. Unfortunately, the work crew who was filling potholes uh, was not all able to get out. The MV Dolly, a Singapore, Singapore flagged container ship, had apparently lost propulsion as it was leaving the port of Baltimore after 1 a.m., at which time crew members uh, for, warned officials of a possible collision, according to a report from the Department of Homeland Security's Cybersecurity Infrastructure Infrastructure Security System or Agency. Good Lord. Okay, if if the name of your y'all's group is the Department of Homeland Security's Cybersecurity Infrastructure Security Agency, that is a long name. Uh, officials in Singapore confirmed that there were 22 uh, crew members aboard and two local harbor pilots aboard the ship. All members of the crew were reported safe. Officials said that the Dolly's lights suddenly went out about 1.25 a.m. with video of the scene showing um, black smoke billowing from the ship's chimney. And if you guys did not have to or did not have a chance to see it, uh, Legal Vices is a maritime lawyer and he has a lot more experience with these big container ships and things like this. And he did a wonderful job breaking this down and kind of not going into all the shenanigans of, you know, it was interdimensional aliens or we've, we all have seen the Twitters today. So he does a really good job of bringing a little mental clarity and, you know, decent sensationalism from the whole thing and kind of gives you a real understanding of what went on without going to too technical because I was able to understand it. Uh, a minute later at 1.26 a.m., the ship appeared to be making a turn uh, as its lights went back off again before it slammed into the bridge's support about a minute later. David Garza, 19, who lives in Dun Dundak, uh, less than a mile away from the bridge, said he heard a loud boom during the moment of impact around 1.30 a.m. It just made the whole house shake. It felt, it felt like an earthquake, sort of, he told the Post. My mom thought it was an airplane had crashed. That's how it sounded. Kaylee Gray, 14, another Dundak resident who lives with her grandmother echoed the description of the crash as an earthquake that jolted residents awake. Um, so now I will tell you that I didn't listen to the entire tire thing of it because I was, uh, making sure Middleson was okay after getting, you know, cavities filled. So I don't know if anyone's getting sued yet. And welcome, Joyful Joy. I think this is your first time here, so welcome. Now, he did say in part of his video that uh, this particular container ship had just come under, I guess, a new insurance or liability company in the last three weeks. So that's never going to be fun. Uh, it's scary. Just looking at it is scary, she said. My family could have been up there. My grandfather could have been up there. He goes on that bridge every day. Moore declared a state of emergency over the incident as U.S. Coast Guard and law enforcement agencies continue to search for the missing, with the National Transportation Safety Board set to begin a lengthy investigation into what caused the crash. The NTSB board chair, Jennifer Hamandi told reporters Tuesday that a team of 24 investigators are at the scene and set to get their hands on the Dolly's data and safety record and background surrounding the bridge to figure out what went wrong in the moments leading up to the collision. Hello, Fisher of Men. 
The ship traveled through the New York area without trouble prior to the crash, with the Dolly passing under both the Veranzano, Narrows, and Bayonne bridges on March 19th, the Bloomberg reports, or Bloomberg reports. The governor and secretary of transportation, uh, Pete Buttigieg, warned that the road ahead for Baltimore would be tough given the destruction of a major bridge that allowed about 35,000 vehicles to cross every day. The path to normalcy will not be easy. It will not be quick. It will not be inexpensive, but we will. We will work together, uh, former Mayor Pete said. And welcome, Slidey Pie. Thank you for joining over on Rumble. Uh, President Biden has also promised to deliver federal funds to, quote, pay for the entire cost of reconstructing the bridge. And he said that every federal agency with any sort of expertise or equity will work on the reconstruction Well, there you go. Officials have yet to offer a timeline of when the shipping lane to the $80 billion per year port of Baltimore, which is now blocked, would be reopened or the bridge would be rebuilt. The collapse of logistical issues... uh, The collapse of logistical issues, not just for the state, but the nation as a whole. Baltimore is the nation's leading import and export site for cars, light trucks, sugar, and gypsum, which is used in fertilizer, drywall, and plaster. The port has seen a record 52.3 million tons of foreign cargo transported in 2023. The port also generates more than 15,300 jobs with another 140,000 jobs linked to the activity at the port. We need to make sure the channel is open, U.S. Senator Ben Carlin, or Cardin, sorry. I just think of Carlin. Cardin. Uh, From Maryland. It affects our economy. It affects our jobs, not just here in Maryland, but all across the United States. Oh, you've been do- you've been researching this all day, and the GPS tracker and travel videos show that no impact would have happened if they didn't turn into the piling. Look, y'all, I don't know enough to know the whole, you know, tra- trajectory and mathology of it. To be very fair with you, when I saw this at like two o'clock in the morning, I was so tired and half awake that I didn't see the the boat. So I thought the bridge just fell on its own. So if that tells you anything about how much I pay attention sometimes, then I did want to do an update. Where in the world? No, not that one. Okay. Where did I put that? I love when I don't Okay, so Shizzy had done uh, the kind of follow-up to this particular story, but the Kaylee Gain, um, you know, fight story, and I can't show this on YouTube, but uh, I sent Shizzy a article about how the family of the aggressor girl who was smashing the... Um, Oh, okay. Well, then you know what you're talking about as a not shipologist. Everything would be better if Carlin was still alive. <laughs> and I don't think we'd agree about much uh, politically or, but he was still the funniest person. But um, there had been a GoFundMe set up by the girl family who was the aggressor who was smashing the girl's head into the into the concrete saying that you know she was also a victim of bullying and everything well perhaps that GoFundMe you know in addition to being against terms of services of GoFundMe 
uh, perhaps they realized that this was going to come out in the news. The Missouri teen, um, and this could also be something else, but it looks like Kaylee was suspended prior to um, going or prior to this happening for fighting. Now, I don't know. She looks like she weighs all of 73 pounds. I have no idea. Um, so it could be that, you know, the GoFundMe of the other girl, maybe they had, you know, a teenage girl beef and they were, you know, fighting prior to this one because it does seem that the Missouri teen who was left fighting for her life after we all saw the video um, was suspended from school the day prior for brawling with another student. Now, this in no way excuses the behavior of either girl, but we were kind of confused um, if this was normal behavior. And I think, unfortunately, more about this story uh, is going to come out. Now, as far as I can tell from the updates, it is unclear. Uh, she's been upgraded from intensive care to stable condition, but um, it's not clear whether he, she has gained any level of consciousness. I mean, again, the video was terrible, but this is just... This is just new information that is coming out. Uh, so it looks like Kaylee did have a history of maybe starting some fights, but I don't know. I am not quite sure. And it it did look like it was kind of a normal square off sort of thing at the beginning, but then it it devolved into something very, very different. So that is definitely something that was an update. And a preliminary autopsy finds Riley Strain's death, quote unquote, accidental with no foul play suspected. So this has been a story that a lot of people have been covering. Um, I didn't want to cover it yet, just until we found something, because, you know, there was so much conjecture, conjecture and internet, you know, crazy as to what was going on. So I wanted there to be a bit of a conclusion before I reported on it, but people have been speculating what happened to this University of Missouri student for a long time. Yes, yes, you are not immortal at 16. Please be careful. And welcome, Tammy. University of Missouri student Riley Strain's death was quote-unquote accidental according to a preliminary autopsy after the body of the 22-year-old was discovered in a Nashville River. Toxicology, toxicology results in a final autopsy report are still pending, but there is no apparent foul play. Metropolitan Nashville Police spokesperson Kim or Chris Mumford told the Tennessean. Yeah, it was sort of normal kind of high school stuff until towards the end. And unfortunately, you know, 30 seconds of really, really stupid can be an entire lifetime of in jail if you fail to make the correct choices. It's what I try to tell my kids all the time. That is a lot. A detective attended the autopsy examination and the death continues to appear accidental, Mumford said. Strain, who went missing earlier this month after being kicked out of a Nashville bar on a trip with a fraternity or with his fraternity brothers, was found dead in the Cumberland River in West Nashville. Uh, quote, I just ask that you mamas out there hug your babies tight tonight, please. Riley's mother, Michelle Whitfield. Witted uh, or whited told reporters, please for me, hug your babies tight tonight. 
The student was visiting Music City with his Delta Chai fraternity brothers when he vanished after leaving country star Luke Bryan's honky-tonk bar, Luke's 32 Bridge, on March 8th. His family initially suggested he had been overserved, but the bar's operator said he had only consumed one alcoholic beverage and two drinks of water at the watering hole. The bar shared that security decided to kick strain from the night spot based on its conduct standards and due to his behavior. Strain was apparently captured on video crossing Gay Street after leaving the bar about a 17-minute walk from Luke's 32 Bridge, police said. A homeless man claimed he saw a, quote, very, very intoxicated strand almost fall over the edge of the trail into the river. Strain's fraternity spoke glowingly of their departed brother. The Delta Chai fraternity is deeply saddened by the tragic passing of our esteemed fraternity brother, Riley Strain, it told the Post in a statement. Our hearts go out to Riley's family and the loved ones and loved ones during this incredibly difficult time as we work to provide support and resources to all those affected by this tragedy. So sadly, it looks like this might have been an unfortunate college kid was way too intoxicated. Even if he wasn't overserved at the bar, he might have pre-gamed just a little bit. Um, and while it is a good thing that he was not a target of foul play, it doesn't make this any easier for the family. So it's not the greatest news, but it, it is nice that it wasn't a violent act that took him out. Unfortunate. Well, you know what I'm trying to say. There is just not a lot of happy news today. But there is a little. Amateur archaeologist finds a North Carolina's North Carolina woman's lost wedding ring. So there you go. Metal detectors can be good for something. A member of an amateur archaeology group in North Carolina was able to help a woman who had lost her wedding ring in the sand on a beach. The Cape Fear Explorers, an amateur group dedicated to uncovering historical artifacts, said Kim Kennedy Hughes contacted the group for help when her family was unable to find the ring lost at, lost at Wrights, Wrightsville Beach. Quote, numerous attempts were made by the family to find the ring with a metal detector until they finally decided to reach out to us as a last prayer, the Cape Fear Explorers said in a Facebook post. Well, I mean, a little. A little. Uh, group member Jack Hooker met with the family at the beach and was able to find the ring with his metal de detector. Quote, although we concentrate on discovering historical artifacts, these types of recoveries are historic in themselves and sure to be a lasting memory for this family, the group said. That's where I get all my engagement rings. <laughs> Same, Squab Bob. That's where Mr. Mo went. He just went to a, a, a beach and was like, oh, we found something. There we go. <laughs> Uh, in other crazy news, and I had not even heard of this case, I don't know, I swear that things are just speeding up here lately, or I get so into a couple different cases, you can't keep up with every case, but criminal charge against nurse, DA, quote, violently slammed newborn in ICU, dismissed as trial was about to begin. Criminal charges against a 30-year-old nurse in New York accused of quote-unquote violently slamming a newborn baby face down into a bassinet in the neonatal intensive care unit have been dropped just hours before she was scheduled to go to trial on one count of endangering the welfare of a child. Suffolk County District, or District Court Judge Eric Sachs on Monday formally dismissed the misdemeanor charge against Amanda Burke, 
her attorney confirmed to law and crime. The Suffolk County District Attorney's Office had previously said that Burke was working at Good Samaritan Hospital's neonatal intensive care unit on February 6, 2023, and was assigned to care for the two-day-old baby, Nico. While the windows in the neonatal intensive care unit are typically covered for privacy reasons, the cover covering on the bottom corner of one of the windows had come off, allowing someone outside of the unit to look in to see baby Nico. The child's father was recording a video of his son when the incident took place. Now, I don't know if they showed the judge the video. I'm trying to figure out how this got dismissed. Like, you guys know, I don't read these articles, you know, before we get a chance to look at them. So I don't know how, first of all, his charge was dismissed. And second of all, how it was a misdemeanor. Quote, Burke, ap Burke approached the newborn while he was laying in a bassinet, lifted him and quickly flipped him over, then violently slammed him face down in the bassinet. Prosecutors wrote the infant's father recorded a video of the incident on his cellular telephone, through the nursery window, after viewing the recording, the infant's mother confronted Burke. The child's parents when, or then showed the video to uh, other nurses and staff members at the hospital. Authorities said that the establishment took swift action, directing Burke to leave the hospital and terminating her employment within two hours of the alleged incident. Burke's attorney, Robert C., Gottlieb told Law and Crime that the dismiss dismissal of the charge was welcome, but a year too late. Okay, explain to me how this is, how, how you doing something like that wasn't fatal. Uh, Gottlieb explained that the essential element of endangering, of the endangering charge prosecutors would have to show is that Burke's actions were likely to cause physical injury to Nico. He said that nine months ago, he provided prosecutors with an expert report stating that Burke's conduct, which was recorded, was not likely to cause Nico injury. I mean, unless this has been grossly exaggerated to the point where this is a, a, a binger. Okay, here's. Here's the only devil's advocacy thing here I would I would say. Let's say you have never seen how nurses have to carry a newborn. Okay? And they can be, you know, it's always your own child, but they can, you know, flip them and kind of do these things very safely. All of my all of my nursery nurses were very nice, except for the one that looked like Tammy Faye Baker, and we won't talk about her. So if the parents were to see something, it just, it doesn't make sense to me that this would have been dismissed. If, if this were truly something that was recorded, now are they going to go after her, her civilly? Most likely. And if this had any, look, if it was my kid, you could not stop me from going after this woman civilly. Okay. Uh, likely to cause physical injury to Nico. He said that nine months ago, he provided prosecutors with an expert report saying that Burke's conduct, which was recorded, was not likely to cause Nico injury. However, prosecutors waited until four days before the trial was slated to begin before they spoke to their own expert. Gottlieb said it was only when the DA's expert also agreed with Burke's actions that Burke's actions were not likely to cause physical injury to Nico, that prosecutors called Gottlieb and advised that they would be dropping the charges. In their explanation to dismiss the charges, prosecutors also referenced Burke's nursing license agency, which investigated the allegations and determined her conduct, quote, did not even rise to the level of gross negligence and did not warrant any action against her nurse's license. 
So something isn't adding up. Now, to to be to be very very fair to par- to parents, this is your this is your precious child, and some of the things in the NICU that you can see them doing to you know your baby can look like they are uncomfortable they are rushed they are not good it can be a very scary experience i've had one in the nicu for almost 3 weeks i can it is such a traumatic experience if the video if the nursing board did not see issues we are very protective especially in chat and ourselves of children and that is great but we also have to give this nurse due process she could i don't know something isn't adding up and i don't understand and i wish they would give a little bit more of a back story because something isn't adding up. Uh, noting that the DA's office had already been informed the agency's decision well in advance of the decision to drop charges, Suffolk County District Attorney Ray Tierney issued the following statement to News 12, indicating that the nurse's licensing agency's decision played a crucial role in his office's decision to dismiss charges against Burke. Quote, unfortunately, despite the disturbing video which captured the incident in this case, the New York State Department of Licensing found the defendant did not act with gross negligence, he said. As such, we could not prove the charge beyond a reasonable doubt at trial. So it it, it definitely, look, can I say that I would not want this woman being a nurse of my children? It just does not, something about this entire case doesn't add up. But that's just me. Uh, I think California needs to maybe consider a mountain lion issue. Although I know that our last mountain lion story was from, I believe, Washington or Oregon. And... I'm sorry, Squid. Uh, my youngest daughter was about five pounds, and she had a free trip to the NICU, too. And that's how she learned to never sleep, ever. And Jess Ruby, Rubery uh, is explaining all the lawyerly lawyer stuff to us. It sounds like one of the elements of the charge is to show the action could cause injury and with all experts saying it wouldn't, the prosecutor can prove the crime beyond a reasonable doubt. So that is probably why they did not try to pursue it. But I'm just saying, maybe we have a mountain lion problem on the West Coast. A Northern California family details mountain lion attack man passed away saving his younger brother's life. The two Northern California brothers were as close as any siblings could be. It comes as no surprise that one passed away while uh, trying, to, trying to save his shared blood. Taylin, 21, and Wyatt Brooks, 18, harbored a deep love for exploring the wilderness around their southern El Dorado County home. Avid hunters and anglers, the brothers had just embarked Saturday on a favored springtime pastime, uh, searching for deer antler. When a mountain lion attack sprung Taylin and Taylin Brooks to save Wyatt's life. For the first time in two decades, the apex predator unalived a human on Saturday. Taylin, 21, died from grave injuries before sheriff's deputies found the mountain lion crouching in front of the 21-year-old. California fish and wildlife officials tracked the animal and euthanized it. Quote, a brother is a friend given by nature, said in a statement provided by the El Dorado County Sheriff's Office from the Brooks and Welsh families. 
these two brothers were driven by nature. The family released a statement Monday describing what led up to the attack for the first time since the horrific and rare incident captured the nation's attention. They mourned the loss of Talon, who they described as a kind, gentle soul who will be deeply missed. We would like to express our sincere thanks for this outpouring of support and prayers from family, friends, and the community, the statement said. We are all devast devastated by the tragic loss of Talon, yet thankful why it is still with us, and we are well aware the outcome could have been even worse. It was about an hour's drive from the family's home above Keasley, not far from Georgetown, and a chance to renew their favorite pastime. Wyatt brought a backpack to carry the bounty they would find. Talon and Wyatt grew up in the unincorporated community of Mount Ackham, where they enjoyed hunting and fishing together almost daily. The brothers knew March was the best time to search out the deer antler sheds before they were blanketed by tall spring grasses. Saturday was also the opening day of junior turkey hunting season. So are the hunters junior or are you only supposed to catch smaller turkeys? And I'm not asking to be a smart ass. I just, I don't know. So they didn't carry firearms that would draw the uh, eye of game wardens. Talon and Wyatt also knew uh, what so many here do, where to go and what to do and what not to do on the back roads that crisscross the fringes of El Dorado National Forest. It was about 1 p.m. Saturday when Talon and Wyatt Brooks made it to Skid Road, just off of Darling Bridge. Talon was the first to spot the mountain lion prowling up the one-lane road as they searched. The brothers did exactly as trained. Both raised their arms to appear large and yelled at the lion, said the family and state wildlife officials. Wyatt threw his backpack at the predator to scare him away, the family said. Nothing helped. The cougar charged at Wyatt, biting at his face. Talon began yelling and beating the animal, but the predator still didn't let go. Wrestling, Wyatt managed to get on top of the 90-pound beast, but the mountain lion clawed his midsection, leading to the 18-year-old losing his grip. That's when the young male lion charged at Talon, chomping... Okay, chomping at his neck and tackling him to the ground. Unfortunately, good lord. Okay. I, I feel terrible for this family. Today is not a good news day. I'm just throwing that out there for you guys. I'm trying to put some Babylon B in here, but holy goodness, are there not a good log? Okay. Oh, squid pro quo. The hunters are kids. Okay. I'm trying to, I have some good news. I found the woman's wedding ring. I have to go through like five different sites and there was just not a whole lot of great news going on. Uh, let's see here. Uh, so basically already injured, uh, why it was able to get to his cell phone and call 911 as the predator, I guess, was startled away by something. Well, that's what I figured, but I'm not a hunter person. <laughs> so. Uh, but he had no cell service. The 18-year-old ran to his vehicle where he ultimately got cell service and called authorities. Talon had already passed away by the time sheriff's deputies arrived to help. Wyatt drove to Darling Ridge and Skid Road to meet the El Dorado County Sheriff's deputy who began to render medical aid. He was taken to Marshall Hospital in Placerville, then to UC Davis Medical Center in Sacramento to undergo reconstructive surgery, the family said. The deputies began searching for the mountain lion when they found it guarding a male body, later confirmed to be Talon. A lot of times larger cats will, I'm surprised he hadn't been taken up a tree, but larger cats will take their prey up a tree. 
but it's not a shock that um, he was guarding his food. They didn't know it at the time if Talon was still alive or not due to the close proximity of the lion and could not fire their weapons directly at the lion, the family said in a statement. Sheriff's deputies fired close to the mountain lion to scare it away. He was tracked down by a professional trapper within a few hours of the incident and euthanized. Uh, California Department of Fish and Wildlife said in a statement, the Brooks family said the mountain lion was found about 100 yards from the attack up a tree. Forensic scientists will continue analyzing uh, necropsy results. So necropsy is an autopsy for animals. I don't know why they don't just call it an animal autopsy, but everyone has to have their own words. Yeah, I'm so sorry, spirit animal, that you had to watch that. That's terrible. The Brooks' grief is raw, but memories of the two brothers, one gone, the other a hero who fought desperately to save his brother's life, will sustain them. Wyatt J. Charles Brooks is recovering at home from cuts to his face and neck. He wants to be a firefighter for Cal Fire, protecting the lands his family calls home. He's been training with the Mount Adams Fire Academy. The 18-year-old plays basket or baseball and loves bow hunting. Talon Robert Claude Brooks painted homes and cut firewood with his father. He was also an extremely talented guitar player, the family said. A black and white photo the family shared showed the young man in a familiar setting, looking skyward, rock t-shirt and blue jeans, a guitar resting on his lap, playing. Quote, he was a very kind and gentle soul that will be deeply missed by all who knew him, the family said. The family has created a fundraiser through the El Dorado Community Foundation to raise money for Talon's funeral expenses and Wyatt's recovery. So if you ever feel like donating, they have a GoFundMe, but... It's amazing that, you know, one brother, they both fought to protect each other, and they were both willing to sacrifice for the other. And then the bravery of Wyatt, that even though he was injured, he ran and, you know, got 911 and tried to get help as much as he could. Here we go. I am a millionaire matchmaker. Why my clients are begging me to set them up with Natalie Portman. Um, well, I mean, she's very attractive and she was Queen Amidala. <laughs> Natalie Portman is everyone's dream girl, according to this love guru. Amy Van Doren, a New York-based multimillionaire or millionaire matchmaker, love coach, and CEO of the Modern Love Club said her clients are thirsting over Natalie Portman now that she's split from Benjamin Milliped. And she's got nearly 40 requests begging her to set them up. Well, good night, nurse. I mean, she hasn't even taken off. Her Look, she hadn't even gotten the little suntan you get from your wedding ring. She hadn't even gotten that, you know, completely blended in people. The ink had not even dried from her divorce papers, and already I'd gotten three emails from my matchmaking clients specifically asking me to set them up with Natalie Portman. Well, I'd like to be set up with Henry Cavill, but I'm sure Mr. Moe and reality would have something to say about that. <laughs> there you go. She didn't even have a chance to lose her wedding ring on the beach yet. <laughs> Truth. Van Doren told the Post there's something about Natalie. Van Doren, who helps high-profile men and women from all over the world find love, she joked in the past that she wouldn't uh, get out of bed for less than $75,000, said she's flattered that people think she has a direct line to Natalie, but she doesn't. <laughs> 
Van Doren said that since she's, quote, in the business of making dreams come true, end quote, she crafted an Instagram story asking if anyone could introduce her to Portman. <laughs> Nobody brought me to Natalie, she lamented, but instead she got 35 more earnest requests from men also insisting that they too should be introduced to Natalie Portman. Uh, Vin Duran said it's bold of random men on the internet to, quote, think that in the event that Natalie Portman wanted to immediately date days after her divorce was finalized, they were qualified to date the woman that many consider not to only to be one of the world's most beautiful, but also very elegant and talented. Quote, all these men all felt qualified to date Natalie Portman, she added. The Oscar-winning actress separated from her husband of over a decade last year after reports that he allegedly cheated on her. Well, there's one man that doesn't want Natalie Portman. But um ching uh, The Oscar-winning actress separated... Oh. Oh, okay. Uh, the divorce was finalized in France last month, where uh, I'm just going to call them Millipede lives with their children. The former lovebirds met on the set of the 2010 film Black Swan. Uh, he was the choreographer. The Post reached out to Portman's reps for comment. Van Doren said that Portman has is a bit of an outlier in that her clients of ver varying ages tell her they're looking uh, what they're looking for in a mate, and they typically find someone like Natalie Portman to be too busy for them to date. Interesting. The men requesting Natalie tend to be searching for women 15 years younger and with no children, and typically less professionally ambitious. But for Natalie, they're willing to overlook their typical criteria. Well, maybe that's why it didn't work out. Allegedly, YouTube, because I have no real idea, okay? <laughs> In things that also happen to me all the time. Quote, I'm a model that's so hot people accuse me of being AI, and it's complete insanity. <laughs> yeah, I can see how her life is terrible being mistaken for AI, and I'm probably going to get in trouble for, you know, the New York Post showing her butular area. Hyper realistic artificial intelligence fakes have become so prevalent online that quote unquote attractive people are now being mistaken for AI. AI beautiful people most affected <laughs> her burdens her burdens so much uh an italian model claimed that she's often accused of being a bot amid proliferation of ai which is known for generating flawless representations of people online Quote, it's extremely frustrating that people think I'm an AI model. Inez uh, Trochia, 29, told Jam Press of the unfortunate phenomenon. It's completely insane to me. Yes, if I had nothing to worry about other than, you know, looking too perfect. Yeah. Imagine the absolute devastation when she gets a pimple. <laughs> uh, the Naples-based influencer who's collaborated with high-end fashion brands from Philip Plain to Dolce & Gabbana, I didn't I don't know who Philip Plain is. Uh frequently uploads immaculate looking glamour shots of herself for it's not a glamour shot unless you're doing this. And you have the fur in the background and the little floatiness. <laughs> uh, to her more than 1.6 million followers on Instagram. Inez says she spent years in front of the camera perfecting her craft and likes to show off the fruits of her labor. Unfortunately, she's not allowed to eat fruit. I'm just kidding. 
Unfortunately, due to the proliferation of AI-generated supermodels online, many people wonder if she's a genuine artifact or another too-hot bot. It's shocking to me that some people question if I'm real. She lamented, I don't think my profile looks like that of a bot. Well, ma'am, you have shells almost freaking bedazzled on your lady bits. I'm going to go with, I God, I hope that's freaking AI, just for a thought. The bombshell added, you can always tell when an AI model has been used because they have the same sad expression in every single photo and video. Her case perhaps presents one of the pitfalls of being, to borrow the words of Ben Stiller in Zoolander, really, really, really ridiculously good looking in the AI age. <laughs> Inez finds her predicament especially frustrating as she's, quote, got highlight reels that show me on a catwalk and things like that. Ma'am, this isn't even first world problems. This is like exceptionally. Look, I wouldn't care if people thought I was fake if I knew I wasn't fake. I mean, I've noticed bot accounts were even stealing my body and putting artificial faces on it. Happens to me all the time. People are like, you know, I'll take, I'll take the, the fluffy shorty, shorter model. No, not that one with the abs, that one. <laughs> Uh, she's not alone with the issue either. I've spoke to some of my colleagues and friend, friends in the industry, and they have the same problem, the proud natural beauty said. Ma'am, them are extensions. Them are in pushed upness. And, okay. <laughs> uh Inez claims that, that by blurring the line between real and virtual worlds, AI contributes to the already stratospheric beauty standards. Madam, hush your front door. Are you over here taking photos and basically, again, dental floss and conch shells? And then you're going to, not to mention you make your living as a model, you know, perpetuating these things. I hear the Sarah McLaughlin music in the background, and I'm sure Sally Struthers will be there to assess your suffering, and we will get, you know, a telethon started for you right away. <laughs> Some of the AI accounts that I have seen are simply uh, completely impossible standards, she explained. The models tend to be super baby-faced with boobs and features that aren't proportional to their bodies. Madam, do we want to talk about some things? Because it looks like we've got some lip filler and some over-penciling on your lips, so they're not as thick as they are. And I'm guessing some of these this hair is extensions. I know. I, I feel very depressed for her. <laughs> Uh, Inez argued, perhaps somewhat ironically, given her vocation, that it's crazy to strive for an unbelievable level of perfection. In other words, beauty is in the AI of the beholder. And while the model acknowledges that the tech has its place, she admits to using the tool to edit photographs. Creating superhumanly hot AI robots is a bridge too far for her. What in the actual? <laughs> Pretty much. I, for the, you know, ma'am, you won the genetic lottery. Those veneers look awesome. And, you know, you got, well, some really nice chestular regions. So I, I don't understand why you're so upset, to be really honest. If if someone thought I looked so good that I didn't seem real, I I think I'd be okay with it. I mean, to be honest with you, because 
if if any one of you has have ever had a day when you're like, I think I look okay, and then you go to the self checkout, and you see the person staring back at you from the camera, and you're like, Ooh, okay, well maybe I needed a little more makeup today. <laughs> Good evening, Jude. Yeah. Uh, this. Justin, as not a, I guess complaining is her market strategy. It, it would seem to be, you know, possibly something that you wouldn't want to, you know, complain about. Uh, in really odd news, Vince Young appears to get knocked out in an ugly bar brawl. Now, I've heard tell that he is very, he used to be big in, you know, the sports bar or the sports ball. Apparently he was a quarterback of some kind for some team. Let's see. Former NFL quarterback Vince Young took a brutal punch to the face that seemed to knock him out cold in a bar fight in Houston on February 9th, according to TMZ. Young, the number three overall draft pick in the 2006 NFL draft who played six seasons and earned two Pro Bowl selections, appeared to be in some sort of argument with a group of males at the Tokyo Joe shot bar before things turned physical, as seen in video obtained by the outlet. The 40-year-old Young, who wore a white hat and black t-shirt, was being held back by someone before the shoving began and a drink was thrown. Uh, the fight eventually moved to the side of the bar where one guy was seen holding Young by the shirt before he punched him in the face. Young's head cocked back and he fell to the ground for a few moments before another person helped him to his feet. The guy that delivered the punch was seen walking away while taking his shirt off. Because, you know, if you're going to get... Y'all, I have no idea. He used to be a former NFL player. Y'all are asking me like I understand football. I apparently have, um, well, resistive, yes, NFL player Vince, Vince Young. No idea, y'all. Look, I'm just trying to, I'm trying to add more sports ball because it is something that I don't generally know about. <laughs> Well, if you're in a brawl and you aren't playing shirts versus skins, how do you know whose side you're on? <laughs> okay, y'all are messing with me. <laughs> uh, the Houston Police Department told TMZ they responded to a call by the bar's owner who claimed things started due to a conversation about, well, racial politics. Because, of course, they did. Um, I don't have any Lynette news right now, but in after I finish this story, I am going to send you over to Shizzy, and then we will be watching some of the uh, hails before crazy craziness happens. <laughs> Put him in tight pants. Maybe I'll know him. <laughs> uh, when it became physical, he asked the, the groups to leave. The owner reportedly also said he was the one who had a drink thrown in his face and took an elbow to the head. The video had no audio, and it was unclear what was said during the altercation. Oh, he was with the 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 blue and white people. Um, the Titans or. The Tennessee flaming um, meteorites. 
The names of the others involved were not released and no arrests were made as the bar owner did not want to press charges, according to TMZ. Young has yet to publicly address the incident. Uh, the former Heisman Trophy runner-up played with the Tennessee Titans and the Philadelphia Eagles from 2006 to 2011 and won NFL Offensive Rookie of the Year. Hey, y'all. If I have resisted in my nearly so-and-so years of life to learn the game of football in my mother's household and... You know, if it is a Sunday and the Vikings or um, Oklahoma are playing, then, you know, there or Kansas City is or Kansas is playing. If I have been able to resist learning football this long, I'm not going to I'm, I'm not going to learn football now. It's just like Euchre. I have a mental block on it. I just can't learn it. I'm. I am down for a game of Uno, but Euchre escapes me. <laughs> so there you go, guys. Unfortunately, not a lot of happy, happy news. And I went to all of my sites. Melanie Dawson, it's it's completely lost on me, too. <laughs> of course, I'm also dead awful at uh, soccer knowledge, too. So. I am an equal opportunity, no sports understood type of person. Although I would be willing to give curling a chance, although I don't understand it at all. It's possibly the only sport I could win now. And or darts. I will say, Melanie, I want to be at, at the darts competition the next time because I did a story on the tournament and apparently people go absolutely crazy, and I want to be a part of that fun. That's what everyone says. I don't, I just, look, I am euchre resistant. I don't know if it's a genetic anomaly or I am just unteachable in euchre. <laughs> that is how they, that is how the cookies crumble. I know, and... um. Your new semi-champion or almost champion is like 21, but he looks 45, and I'm digging it. I am digging it. It is just all the things. So there you guys go. Hopefully, we will have more good news tomorrow. I will look up that site because I always need more sites to go to. I have a couple ones that I go to. And then a bunch more that I try to send myself stuff. But uh, today was just, I was going, I was refreshing every five seconds. I'm like, we have to find some happy stories. And <laughs> there were just not a whole lot out there today. Some days it be like that. But I am going to let you guys go. You all will be directed over to Shizzy. I am going to make sure that every window is shut because apparently it started raining. It started raining, cold raining. You know, I thought we were we started spring already. Did Indiana not get the, the memo? I guess not. Any hoozle, have a wonderful evening if you're not going over to Shizzy's. And I will see you tomorrow morning. And if you're joining us over at Shizzy's, <laughs> I will see you in a couple minutes. Bye, guys.